There's a lot of people at Triple M who get paid to interview people and yep. ask, you know, precise, uh, sharp questions and, and, you know, use your words economically. And I'm guilty of asking long questions and, and so is Bernie Vince and so is Dave Gleason mm-hmm. and so have a few people here at Triple M. Here's a few of the longest questions that have been asked uh, prior to today. Loz asking this question to the inspired unemployed guy. And this is the thing, the whole point of what you do is that it's so earthy and relatable, but I guess it puts you in these situations where you're in the middle of Europe dressed as a woman doing filming with an iPhone and oh, God. I mean we get it here sometimes where we'll interview oh, someone else and I leave and I'm driving home and going, Why did I say hello like that? Or <laughs> have you had any super like cringe moments that you can't stop thinking about afterwards? Oh, Thirty four seconds. Oh, no. Bernie, oh, asking this question at Live Golf. Did you ever, ex- like, did you, in your wildest dreams, ever ex- <laughs> think that this would happen? Like, the the people here, yeah. the the crowd, everything. Even yesterday was so good. We were part of that. <laughs> the commentators were saying oh. we have not in. Well, I know it's, the history doesn't go back far, but yeah. <laughs> did you think you would be the best? Outing that they've had. 35 seconds. Hey! Dave Gleason asking this long question to Alice Cooper. Now, um, you uh, obviously, as a young musician, when you started off all those years ago, uh, were obviously influenced by uh, acts that came before, or you would have seen people that you you wanted to... <laughs> but, um, you know, you take things from their show and stuff. Uh, artists over the years. And <laughs> pumpkins, me- mega death, flaming lips... <laughs> Cap that so many people oh. have, uh, have t- drawn influence from you. 36 seconds. Oh. Mark Rusciuto talking to the Premier about uh, the floods. Lots of people. Uh, <laughs> look, it's it's great that the river never got as high as what oh, no. they um, it looked like it was going to. It still got high, it. still done a lot of damage, still huge <laughs> amounts of people uh, not doing well. So uh, I, I understand all that. It is receding. Uh, the, the water heights in Renmark and, and Wakeley and places like that. And still a huge amount of damage down lower in the river. What's what's your um, what's the plan? I know you've got oh, different stages along the river. You're going to sort of drop some of the restrictions there. What, what's the plan for uh, the river in the next few weeks? Mark Rusciuto's question. Thirty-seven seconds. Oh, just shut Make up. it stop. All right, well, <laughs> we've been through a lot of pain there, but oh, we've actually got. A new contestant. You're kidding. Greens Party member Nick McKim at the Senate inquiry into the supermarket's price gouging yeah. yesterday. Have a listen to this. Your company, alongside Coles, enjoys a market domination, a sector which has far less competition than comparable markets overseas. And to price gouge your customers. Countless Australians are skipping meals. You've engaged in anti-competitive behaviour. How can you possibly deny that you are using your market dominance to do over farmers, to do over workers and to price gouge your shoppers? One minute twenty. A new winner, Nick McKim from the Greens Party. Uh, when he asked Brad Banducci from uh, Woolworths, he was cleanly shaven. He had a beard by the end of it. Uh, it went from minute 20. Unbelievable. It's time for Joe's Joke. Yeah, it is time for Joe's Jokes. We've heard from Rue's kids already, uh, Rosie and Tommy. They were hilarious. Now it's time to go to the Triple M family. Who have we got? We've got Rory from Craigmore. Good morning, Rory. Good morning. Good morning, Rory and Loz. Oh. How are you, Rory? What are you up to today, mate? I'm going to work for my dad at Wellington East. Oh, what? You're working? <laughs> yeah. Good I'm boy. Putting down pipes in two houses. Putting, putting down, down pipes, pipes in. in. Yeah. Good how, boy. How old are you, Raw? Uh, I'm 11. Oh. 11 going on bloody 25. Beautiful, mate. Make sure dad pays you. Yeah, he does. How much are you getting an hour? Or you get paid by the day? Oh, by the day. Uh, what, 100? Oh, no. Don't let him underpay you. Mm. Ta- lo- take him to the Fair Work Commission if he does. <laughs> All yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, Come I have on, a feeling Dad's with him, so yeah, we just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we get it right. Have you had that a toasted sandwich yet, Rory, at the little cafe? Have you had a toasted sandwich yet? 
No? No. Mm, okay. All right. We'll make sure Dad feeds you. All right, mate. What's your joke, Dale? Oh, okay. What do you call two ducks and a cow? What do you call two ducks oh and a cow? Oh, my God. You got me thinking here, Rory. What? Quackers and milk. <laughs> Quackers and milk. Not bad. Not bad, That's mate. That's what you have on Smoko when, well, the, uh, when you, you put work your little in. butt off today, Rory, and make sure you put your hand out at the end of the day, mate. Good to hear the kids are out working. Yeah. Oz, let's head to Athelston Primary School. G'day, Ruby. Hi. Hello. Hi, Ruby. Hang on a second. I've just seen on here. Is this my niece, Ruby? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good morning, sweetheart. How are you? Good. How old are you, darling? Tell the audience. Six. 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 Oh, wow. You're getting so grown up. And you normally go to Athelston Primary, don't you? Yeah. But you're on holidays at the moment. What are you up to today? I'm going to have a sleepover at my Grammy and Grampy's with Fifi. Oh, how good a sleepovers, Ruby. They're brilliant. Now, I just need to ask you a little question. What's Auntie Loz like? <laughs> Did you say funny. S- funny. Funny. I thought you said silly. <laughs> Uh, that's all right. all right. Oh, Ruby, I love you, darling. All right, do you have a joke for us? Yeah. All right. What let's... did Mr. and Mrs. Chicken call their baby? What did Mr. and Mrs. Chicken call their baby? What, Ruby? The egg. Uh, an egg? An egg. <laughs> <laughs> very, very funny. Oh. You're funnier than your auntie. <laughs> I can hear some some of my I can hear my brother in the background agreeing oh, with that, Ruby. Oh, good on you guys. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ruby. Love you, darling. Yeah. Have a good day. Oh, Loz. Oh, That's nice, I isn't it? Hey, Rory and Ruby both win family passes to AFL Max. That's Woo-hoo! a great place to party, learn, train and play. It's all indoors and absolutely perfect for the school holidays. Get down there to aflmax.com.au. The top five things we've learnt on Rue, Dits and Loz this week. Number five, Rory called up for kids' jokes. Good morning, Rue and Loz. And we learnt what he was doing for the school holidays. What are you up to today, mate? I'm going to work for my dad at Wellington East. Oh, what? You're working? <laughs> yeah. Good I'm putting boy. Putting down pipes in two houses. Putting, putting down, down pipes, pipes in. Yeah. Good how, boy. How old are you, Raw? Uh, I'm 11. That makes your dad pays you. Yeah, he does. We also learnt Rue is now head of the Fair Work Commission for 11-year-old <laughs> kids working with their dad. How much are you getting an hour? Or you get paid by the day? Oh, by the day. Uh, what, 100? Oh, no. Don't let him underpay you. Take him to the Fair Work Commission if he does. Yeah. Have you had a toasted sandwich yet? No. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on, uh-huh. Smoko. <laughs> Number four. But Rory should definitely listen to Rue's financial advice. As this week, we learnt an interesting fact about Rue's wedding. Rue, when you got married, and you've been married for how many years? Uh, fair few. <laughs> Sixteen. I heard that you had such a wonderful wedding and it planned so well that you made money off the wedding. Oh, come on. I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the wedding and I reckon he made money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit rude of me putting a poker machine in every hotel room, wasn't it? Number three. This week we learnt there are cardboard cutouts of Rue, Dits and Loz all around town getting some publicity. I saw you guys being lifted above Weymouth Street. Really? On a, um, on a crane. So I actually, I'm sure you guys saw, got you guys on Sunrise. Oh, was that you? <laughs> that was me. That was Hell me. Yeah. We were on national TV. Someone was holding out Someone's our cardboard Someone's texting. Out. I saw a Rue at the firm, but not sure it was a cardboard <laughs> cutout. out. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. <laughs> we learnt Rue's house is an occupational health and safety hazard. I've had a bit of a rough month around the house, uh, Loz. I've been doing some gardening, cut my head twice just from walking into... OK. I uh, walked into a branch, cut my head open, walked into another branch a week later. Didn't have work boots on yesterday. I had my old sneakers on. Gone around the trailer and stomped on... Do you know what a crab rake looks like? Yes. Well, there was a rusty old one and it was on the ground. It was upside down. I've stepped on it. That's gone through my foot. Ah! 
I couldn't get it off. I was actually like a crab. Got my desserts after all these years of yeah. tormenting the You're crab You're so good population. at crabbing, you crabbed yourself. I got, I got crab. Yeah. <laughs> Can you beat Rue's injury? Marcus, how'd you hurt yourself? Still wanted some building at the house at the minute, doing some renovations. I was up on the ladder and I nail gun straight through some timber. Beautiful. And nailed my finger to the, um, <laughs> the building. Oh, no! <laughs> and then fell off the ladder and then it... What? You're like Jesus! <laughs> yeah, I know. Number one. Speaking of old guys that wear sandals, Chris Dittmar has been away all week. Dits is away. He's got another week off. He's got a bit of long service loot. And, well, we learnt the holy trinity of Rue, Dits and Loz. Just hasn't quite been the same oh. without Dits. So, mm. Loz, we got a week together. Yeah, just you and I. Yeah, you've been looking forward to that. I've been so... I've just been jumping out and <laughs> I thought, we're definitely not going to run out of things to say. No. Mm. 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 No, we've got heaps of content. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay, Monday wasn't great. Surely things got better on Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. Tuesday of this lovely week. It's just Rue and I this week, so if you hear any weird intros like that one, mm. Mm, it's because Dits isn't here to do them. <laughs> I thought you guys said you had heaps of content. What are you going to talk about? Yeah, Dits is away and yeah. uh, we're a bit uh, lost without him and uh, we missed the big red cat. And Let's skip to Wednesday's show, see how that went. Good morning, 6am on the dot, well 14 seconds past, I don't think it gets much better than that. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um, he's Somebody's... back next week, isn't he? Sure, yeah, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> he better be. Come back, Dits! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rig red cat will be back. Don't worry about that. He'll be fresh as all hell. His gout, will, gout would have recovered. And, uh, I think you. I think actually, it's probably having a flare up after his little holiday Maybe, break. Maybe who knows yeah. what he's up to. But nah, anyway, it's been good actually. That made us sound very awkward, but hey. I think we've had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday I was putting all my rubbish into a skip bin and was, you know, just going a bit too fast around the trailer and stepped on an upside down crab rake that was rusty and sharp and put it through my sole of my sneaker and I felt it pierce my foot and go up into my foot and I thought, oh God, that feels nasty. Um, and then I couldn't get it off. I, I was actually like a crab. Yeah. Uh, I got my desserts after all these years of yeah. tormenting the You're crab You're so population. good at crabbing, you crabbed yourself. I got, I got crabbed. Yeah. I got crabbed. <laughs> I just didn't get put in the crab cooker and yeah. boiled for five Not yet minutes. anyway. Uh, yeah. But anyway, let's take some, co- actually we've got some texts as well. Uh, I had to pull my bike out of the shed. I got my toe stuck in the chain, <laughs> went to try and get my toe out and then got my finger caught there also. <laughs> Sean from Cockatoo <laughs> Valley. I love Sean from Cockatoo Valley. Uh, did some, uh, another fella Kim did some truck driving uh, years ago, stepped out of the cab onto a pallet and put my foot uh, put a nail through my boot and straight into my foot would have been, oh, God, that would have been exactly Ooh. like what I had to do. Let's go to Hope Valley. G'day, Tara. How have you hurt yourself? Uh, playing beach cricket. What did you and, do? And uh, stepped on a sea urchin. What are and they like? the whole like? thing broke off in my foot. Yeah. What's a sea urchin? What do, what do they look like? It, uh, it's full of spines. I think it's sort of a sea echidna. Yeah. Oh, you stepped on a sea yeah. echidna. Oh, like, that was no good. Yeah, a bit like that. Really yeah, sharp. How God. long did it take to get all the spines out? I don't know. It felt like forever. And we got to the last one or two and one of them broke off in my foot. Oh, so they, they take were fishing weeks around to in there. get infested and then pop Ooh. out and squirt everywhere. Good on you, Tara. Let's go to Virginia. G'day, Daniel. When did you injure yourself? Morning, Ruin Loz. Um, I was actually at Blanchetown. Uh, my uncle's got a shack up there. We're doing some uh, kneeboarding and stuff. He uh, decided to throw the ski rope out a bit too far. So I went to go pull the boat back in and stepped on a piece of glass Ooh. and copped uh, 17 stitches in the bottom of my foot. No, oh. that's, uh, that's nasty. <laughs> Tex is coming in left, right, and center. We must have. People just get hurt all the time. Bloke wearing, uh, doing some chainsawing. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, with uh, cutting up some wood in his backyard, footy shorts and thongs. No Just Mexican work boots. Where can you go wrong? Yeah, and anyway, put the chainsaw down, roll straight over the top of his foot. Okay. Beautiful well, stuff. Uh, do you know what? I remembered one because I thought I was kind of uh, exempt from this phone, but I just remembered that it was about 10 years ago, New Year's Eve, and I was wearing a white dress and I noticed that the hem had come down on the bottom. So mm. I went, oh, I'll get the genome out and sew it. And there's a guard on that where it- On your sewing machine. On your sewing machine, you pull the guard down yeah. and it-, it 
so you can't fit your finger Don't underneath. Your fingers, yeah. can't stitch your finger. I was very cocky because I f- thought myself to be a bit of a seamstress. Mm-hmm. Didn't put the guard down. Started sewing. The needle went through my fingernail all the way through my what? finger. Came back up <laughs> like that and put a thread through my finger. Blood spurted all over this white dress. I had to stand there for 20 minutes trying to pull this um, thread out of my finger and the sound of it <laughs> ripping through my finger. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Loza. <laughs> ripping uh, through my fingers. No more sewing for you, darling. Yeah. Let's go to Blackwood. G'day, Jason. What do you got for us? When did you hurt yourself? G'day, mate. How are you? Good. How would you hurt yourself? Um, well, one afternoon, my wife and myself decided to um, do some pruning in the garden. And uh, she'd just finished trimming a bougainvillea. I don't know whether you know it's a bougainvillea I've branch tree. I've heard of them. What do yeah. they look like? Yeah. Oh, they're just a bush with really heavy duty roots and stalks. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she'd cut all that off at the bottom, all 90 degrees, like not on an angle or anything. And I was on top of a ladder on a good neighbour fencing, trimming another branch that was next to it. Lost my footing all the way to the ground, straight on the bougainvillea <gasps> branches, impaled myself. About a six-inch bit went in the in my back, <gasps> but we didn't what? know this that time. Yeah, and I've still got the branch to this day. The the surgeon removed it and gave it to me. <laughs> and uh, you know, we rushed to hospital, and we didn't really know the in- extent of the damage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it actually punched a hole through my shirt, and the surgeon found my shirt in there. Whoa. So it was pretty horrific. You were like a shazlick. Get out of the garden, Jason. Uh, you don't want to be doing that. A shazlick. Let's go to That's Morphe Vale. Fiona, tell us how you got injured. Guys, um, so of course when we grew up in the 70s, me and my sister were playing in um, the shed. I stepped on a, a pail with a great big massive nail, like a decking <laughs> pail with a great big massive nail sticking out of it, oh. went halfway through my foot, oh. almost you could see it coming through. Did you feel As it, re- pierce it? Oh, mate, I felt the crunch. Oh. And then, oh, yeah, as a result of that, as I said, we grew up in the 70s, everything was still. Our um, table that we played with, you know, as kids was upside down. So I pushed my sister on her back. She then went forward and the leg of the doll table pierced in between her breastbone (gasps) and that went in about a centimetre and to this day, 40 odd years later, you can still see the scarring on my foot and in between her breastbone. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) That's a good blow. The 70s. Uh, Let's head to Salisbury East. Dave, tell us about the injury quickly. Yeah, mate. Um, Compound saw, cutting some timber, hit a knot, jumped up. And went into the saw no. and the forefinger and uh, the thumb dropped straight down in between. What, you <gasps> cut them off? No, I didn't cut it, just cut through it. Oh. But, uh, yeah, and ended up uh, in, the, in the hospital and uh, my, uh, microsurgeons checking the tendons are all still connected and oh. all the rest of it. Oh, what about when God. you see people out there with nine fingers and that, and you just yeah, go, what what's, happened? What's the story? On, tell us. It's I've got a mate who's ask. lost his thumb water skiing, uh, got it caught in the rope, and he always puts his thumb up to his nose to the little kids a around. Yeah. It's like his thumb's going How up do, his the nose. Kid, do the kids enjoy oh, that love, one? Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The kids love it. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't um, freak them out. Let's go to Kidman Park. <laughs> oh, it does. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are tormented, but the adults have a ball. I laugh. I love every time. Let's go to Kidman Park. Marcus, how'd you hurt yourself? Hey, mate, doing some building at the house at the minute, doing some renovations. Yeah, and I was up on the Home ladder. Renos. You yeah, can do it. Yeah, you I, was, can do it. DIY. I was up on the ladder with the first fixed nail gun, which is a framing <laughs> nail. Yep. And the nails are big. They're like two inches long, and they're pretty thick. Yeah, you know what you're so, doing. Yeah, I was holding my, the last rafter up, and I nail gunned straight through some timber. Beautiful. And nailed my finger to the, um, <laughs> to the building. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was, I, I was stuck. And then fell off the ladder, and then it what? Pulled You're my... like Jesus. Yeah, I know. It pulled my pulled my finger straight through the nail, ah! and then yeah, I jump off. I, I yeah, jump down, and then um, there's blood going everywhere. I don't know what to do, and then um, I find out my wife has left for the day, so she's not home. Oh no, uh, she's gone the early. The front gate's locked. I've got no keys. I don't know where they are. 
So I end up just sitting on the kitchen floor for about half an hour, bleeding everywhere, Crying? just contemplating my life. Oh, <laughs> how did What's I get here? What's the house worth it? Yeah. What am I doing? Oh, Marcus. P- pay a bloody trading. I know. So that's many... what we do. We try and save money. I know. And we end up costing we our fingers. Yeah. yeah. Simon from Greenwith, what was the injury? Yeah. How you going, guys? Um yeah, a few years ago now, I was uh, working, doing, painting the outside of a house in uh, the Riverland, and I stepped off my uh, ladder, and I didn't realise there was an uncapped star dropper there. Oh, those uh, bloody star oh, droppers are yeah, dangerous when they're this, low to the ground. Yeah. yeah, this one was a brand new one, so I had a sharp weld dag right off the side of it. And what happened? And uh, I ripped my leg open from my knee oh. down to my, oh, three quarters of the way down my calf muscle. How Ooh. many stitches? Ripped. Looked like a shark bite. <gasps> In the river, it was rude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought I was in a bit of strife. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get it so sewn it, up? Uh, well, I looked at my leg and I thought, "Oh shit, what's happened here?" And then uh, I had to scream out. I knew there was a carpenter on the roof, so I screamed out to him, and he jumped off the roof and came down, and he just turned green. Ooh. And had he had one look at my leg, and uh, yeah, he just wrapped it up with his jumper, and then they had to call an ambulance and um, Ambo. get into the. Yeah, she had to go in for emergency surgery. And Jeez, what Barry Hospital? Uh, we went to Wakeree, and then they transferred Wakeree. me over to Barry. Yeah, he should have went there yep. anyway. Oh that's all right. God. Good on you, Simon. He, he survived. Let's go to Ross Trevor, Marco. You got a big field to beat here. What have you done to yourself? Oh, I don't know if it will compete, but morning, Lauren and uh, Mark. We yeah. um, we were playing golf a couple of years ago. You had the competition down at the Grange. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I was on Ditch's team, so we take off and Paul we bugger. get to the first hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paul Bugger playing with him. <laughs> um, <laughs> hit it into the bunker on the first hole. Yeah. Tried to, got it out on the first shot, but getting out of the hole, my back gave out. Uh, they had a small back problem mm-hmm. and um, fell down, broke my wrist. You broke your spots. wrist? Yeah, but I didn't know that. I thought it was just, you know, a little bit of a twist or a sprain. So we finished the next eight and a half holes. What? And uh, driving home, yeah. it was, uh, couldn't turn the steering wheel, went to the doctor and he goes, you fractured your wrist and uh, uh, not only fractured the wrist, but also tore the long head bicep in the shoulder. <laughs> and oh, up- come on, Marco. <laughs> Seriously, seriously. Yeah. And I've, I've got the photos to prove in the surgery that came afterwards for uh, the shoulder repair uh, for a frozen shoulder. That's what happens when you play golf with Dits, Margo. <laughs> I can't oh, believe God. it. What, some good stories there. Some good stuff. Nail, I, Jesus wins. Yeah, I think Jesus does does win. He yeah. does. He was hanging from the yeah. nail. It was just Easter. It was just his... Day of resurrection. <laughs> He's got some gin. Yeah, yeah he'll be turning Jesus. water into gin <laughs> there with Dasha yeah. and Fisher. Yeah. Uh, and you can use Triple M on their website for a 25% discount as well. Rude, it's online. Triple M Breakfast with Rude, Dits and Laws. Best breakfast show in Adelaide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lehman. Lehman! I'm Anthony Lehman. Oh, Lemo joins us every hey, week. Good hey. morning, Lemo. Oh, <laughs> B-O-D. Hey, guys. <laughs> we where is Dits? I sent him a bloody mushroom risotto and I wanted to ask him how it was. Oh, no. <laughs> Lemo. What's going on? <laughs> He's probably scratching the ceiling or something yeah. at the moment if he did that. He can't stop <laughs> looking at his hands. What is going on with all these mushroom things at the I, moment, Lemo? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to investigate. They didn't have mushies in Peabanga. No mushrooms there, mate. No, it was meat and potatoes there. Mm. <laughs> it was meat and meat and one veg. <laughs> no mushroom gravy. <laughs> no mushroom gravy, mate. <laughs> mushroom was for fancy people when I was a kid. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. They are. So, they are a bit bougie, aren't they? Mushrooms. Yeah, very, very fancy. Too fancy for me. Yeah. Hey, uh, guys. Great to uh, great to have you back from your well earned break. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Mr. Radio person from the last 30 years. Just, I'm hey, surprised you didn't come in and do the fill-in show for us. It was me, actually, by the way, uh, Lemo, doing the fill-in for myself. So, oh, really? <laughs> me climb the tree before you pick the fruit, That's Lemo. Right. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ruined it for off at Gather Round, and I was filling in for my own show. So okay, Loz, you need to hire whoever negotiates Ruse contract. I'm yeah. off of that. I know. I'm off of that. Well, she it doesn't take it up. He keeps changing his mobile number. He's got burner phone, so I can't keep track of him. <laughs> you know that's not true. <laughs> I get prank called every Saturday night at midnight from some idiot crow supporter or port supporter. <laughs> he's he's been running a burner phone for years. Oh, that's from my hey, dealing. How good how good was Gather Round, by the way? Yeah, it was oh. so amazing. Did you come over? It was. It was. I did yeah. come over. It was unbelievable. Had a I did show, a show with Titus O'Reilly. Oh my god! Yeah, of course, yeah. Titus O'Reilly. Went to the Hawthorne Collingwood game, which was a belter. But I bumped into four blokes from Coffin Bay. They told me this story, and I thought that to me sums up Gather Round. Coffin Bay. Yeah. yeah. Four blokes. They came over. They said they were all picking on one of them because he was meant to get them tickets, and he didn't get tickets to any of the games. Oh, there was plenty of those stories. They're not easy tickets. <laughs> but they've driven seven and a half hours from Coffin Bay. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> and they went up to Mount Barker, and they thought, "I oh, will just try and get into the game." Of course, you will. Oh, you know. They went up there, but of course, they go, "Well, it's sold out. We haven't got any tickets." And they said they were standing at the front of the ground. They're half cut. They're going, "Oh, what are we going to do?" And Peter Malinowskis walks past, no! and he goes, "How you going, fellas? What's it like in there?" And they go, "Ah, we couldn't get in. We haven't got tickets." And he goes, "That's all right. Come in with me." <gasps> oh no. And the Premier walked him into the game. Oh, how bloody good is that? That is, that is magnificent from <gasps> Peter Malinowski. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who isn't walking people into the MCG, Dan Andrews. Yeah, no. <laughs> is, no, no, he's not. It's not happening. No, no, he wouldn't have talked to him. And I'll tell you, he's getting free oysters uh, whenever he wants, too. <laughs> Peter yeah, Malinowski. He knows exactly what he's <laughs> they, doing. They were oyster farmers, too. Oh, thoughts. well, there you go. Just, oh, wow. That's how you that, secure votes. That's it. That's Don't worry about well, shaking hands and kissing babies. Because normal. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Well you done. just get people in for free. That's all you can Oh, very good. <laughs> that, very that, that is such a normal story yeah. for South Australia, isn't it's it? Great. Blokes coming down. Oh, who, you meant to get the tickets, Macca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Did this they... bloody idiot here said he'd organised But they it. had a belt of a weekend anyway, even if they didn't go to the footy. Yeah, Did they, they had... say when they found out that, that he didn't secure the tickets? Was it when they arrived or? When they went to go to the first game on the Thursday. Oh, my God. And he said, God. oh, I haven't got tickets, by the way. <laughs> oh, and you know what? And you know, they did get tickets, too. Me and Titus O'Reilly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did they? That's the one lot of tickets they did buy in advance. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, oh, mate. So the worst show so, in town they got tickets <laughs> to. <laughs> How did that go, by the way? Was that a bit of fun? It was bloody good, yes. People loved it. It was a full hour, so we'll definitely uh, do it again next year. How oh, good. Goodly, mate. For gather yeah. rounds. We'll be back. Hey, and qu- quickly, guys, before I let you go, my young fella played his first game of footy last weekend. Oh, oh. nicely, Mosey. He got the under-18 best and fairest talent from his dad. Yeah, well, he's got, he's, he went all right, to be fair. He went all right. The Fitzroy under-8s, and I was sitting there on the sidelines watching. He runs out there, and, you know, in your head, I'm sitting there in my head watching the game going, Willie run Paul back, Wilson. mate. Yeah. Run back. Come on, make a bit of space, mate. Make a bit of space. Get in there and get the – I said call for – in my head, I'm going, call for the ball. Yeah. And after a while, my wife turns to me and goes, he's only seven. Oh. Leave <laughs> and I'm like, what? And apparently I was saying it just loud enough for my wife to hear it next to me. <laughs> the wives like, don't understand, down, Limo. They don't understand what we're going through as dads of kids. <laughs> yeah. I know. Football. As you can see, I'm like, his mate's kicking out from full back. There's no one on one half of the ground. I'm like, just run out there and kick the ball to you. Welcome to my life for the last 10 years. It's a tough life, isn't it? At least your kids can play. Can you imagine my dad sitting on the side? My dad just watching me just picking daisies. (laughs) Can you you remember your first game? Uh, What, me playing? Yeah. Yeah, I actually went to under 10s as a six-year-old. My dad was coaching and I got there and I crapped my dax and didn't play for the whole year. (laughs) I was too scared. Is that right? Mate, my first game, I was seven playing under 16s for Browns World. (laughs) And this is back... But Loz, you, you got to understand, Loz. It, What's the youngest groups under 16s? Yes. We, we had no kids, no kids, right? What So in country footy and under 16s, there's kids aged 6 to 23. Oh, right? no. <laughs> yes. I played against, I swear, Loz, I played against kids with full beards who drove <laughs> to the game. 
Come on. He didn't have a tattoo, Lee. Oh, though. no. <laughs> and covered in tattoos. All right, All right mate, we got to go. And, and uh, right. have a good day. Good on you guys. See, See you, Lemo. Uh, oh. We have Lemo every Wednesday. Yeah, it's through it. It's a loss. Triple M. Dits is away this week. Where's my cousin? And because we miss him terribly. Uh, Ditmar's away on his little break, so it's just real and I. <laughs> it's time for your daily dose of Dits. We miss him. We want to play some do. old school stuff. Yep. All right. Well, um, I decided to prank him. He's very easy to prank Dits. He <laughs> does, doesn't quite get the, I don't know. His in the intuition early... isn't, on, you know, like he doesn't immediately assume it's a prank. No. Um, yeah. So we took full advantage of that for many years. And this one went right to the heart because he grew up on the street where Port Adelaide Oval is. And um, he's just Port Adelaide through and through. And he's done all their functions for years. Mm. He gives so much back to that footy club. And he's not the greatest fan of cane corn. So I put the combination together and this is what happened. Hello. Dude, it's Nortz, mate, from Port Adelaide, but how are you going? <laughs> Good, mate. How are you? You've got a couple of minutes? Yeah. Um, so the Gala stuff, mate, I hate doing this. We'll bring this up now, but I got, a, I got a conference call from the events team yesterday who are really concerned with UMCing on Friday night. Okay. <laughs> Look, apparently they've heard in recent times, and I don't know where they've heard this, apparently you've emceed a few things in recent times and you've had to refund someone or um, and there was another one where did some memorabilia break or something or, or, or something random like that? Does that make sense? What? And then there was another incident where <laughs> someone fell asleep and Oh some my god. Court. Is any of that true? <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's a joke. Oh, are you kidding me? No. Oh, no. God. One of the boarders has heard this, rang the events guys, the events guys called me last night and said Mate, we've got a pull dits. And I'm like, what's two or three days from the event? 1,600 people going. It's one of the biggest events in the club's history. I said, mate, I said, Dits is, dits is Port Adelaide through and through. He, he knows our product more than anybody. And they said, nah, it's too high risk. And, and then the other thing is, there's, there's <laughs> Kane Corns who's chomping at the bit as well to MC. And oh. I don't know what to do, mate. Nah, don't worry about it. It's fine. I, mate, it doesn't bother me. That's fine. <laughs> Tell a board member, well done. That's that's quite embarrassing. As I said, I reckon, I reckon leave it. If Kane's that keen to do it, let him do it. Because I feel a bit flat now. That's just ridiculous. Do you know, can I, I'll tell you, I don't, worry about I, know what, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about. All right. I told a funny story about I was invited to the Campbelltown Rotary Club on a Monday night to speak yeah. to them. When I got there, the bloke said to me, he said, you know what Rotary people are like? They're all sort of in their 80s and 90s. He said, don't be offended if some people nod off and go to sleep. I said, oh, my goodness, God. I then did my speech. He said to me, he said, hell, no one went to sleep. I then said, well, geez, I must be good. That was a feather in my cap. That is the story I told on radio. Well, somehow someone's got the wires crossed. They think someone fell asleep in the front row on the main table. This is the information that we've got. And that oh you're at some kind of event at Kuyong and you drop some $5,000 memorabilia piece that shattered everywhere. And you had to pay it back or something? No. Nah. I know where this has come from. It's all a joke. Rue has been taking the piss out of me about my guest speaking. So last week, it's been an ongoing thing. Last week, I turned up at the Probus Club, who are all senior citizens. And this is where it's funny. They forgot that they'd engaged me. I got there, and the bloke that had rung me looked at me and said, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I'm your guest speaker. He said, oh, are you? I said, yeah. So every week, no, there's been one of these funny stories. It's an ongoing joke about my guest speaking experiences. All right, okay. Obviously, everyone's got their wires crossed here. This is not ideal. Yeah, but also, uh, and Norts, look, now that you've said all this to me, that, that board member, please, if they can minute it at their meeting that I'm actually a decent person, I'm not a high risk, like, for God, that's f***ing embarrassing. I'm high risk. Jesus, I, I did your function last year. I've done plenty of functions over here. I don't think I've, you know, got up on stage and got my out or anything. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's, anyway, it's not your fault. I'm not going to crack at you, but if that board member could actually rectify it and say, oh, actually, I got this totally wrong, that'd be nice. Yeah, all right, mate. All right, all right. No, I get it. No, I, I, and I, mate, I've known you for years. I, I love your work, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, God. mate, leave it with me. Oh, God. I go away, mate. See ya. Thanks, dude. Bye. Oh, oh how good.
That's, it, my, that's my best work ever. He yeah. gave everything. He did. He did. The he did. And you know what I love is that it noughts, who, by the way, deserves an Academy Award. Oh, yeah, that. look, he's been a beneficiary he, of Triple M ever since that day. He's been trying to, he was trying to wrap him up and it's kept giving him more. <laughs> nah. Actually, no, can I just add this? I Brilliant. mean, superb. Daily dose of dits right there. Thanks, dits. <laughs>